Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we resume this edition of the Daily Debate, focusing more on the outcome of French President Emmanuel Macron's visit to uh, Egypt, which ended yesterday. In order to know more, we're very much honored to have with us Dr. Sharif Amir, Professor of Political Science, or rather Geopolitical Researcher, Sorbonne University. Thank you very much, Doctor, for Thank being with us. Me. And uh, Mr. Mohammed Aydel Haikal, Researcher at the Egyptian Center for Strategic Studies. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohammed, for Thank being with us. Us. Now, gentlemen, uh, Macron's visit comes at a very critical timing. Um, uh, Macron still faces 11th week of uh, yellow vest protest in his home country. Uh, the protests are uh, against his uh, economic reforms. Now, uh, Dr. Sharif, how do you read the timing of the visit? Well, the timing of the visit is very mm, significant for uh, um, President Macron himself because he wants to deliver the message that he, that, uh, you know, the symbol of his, uh, the slogan of his party, La France en marche, meaning France or the Republic en marche, meaning that uh, the, the Republic is, is going forward. Mm -hmm. So he wants to give this message that he's going forward with his uh, relations uh, and with his uh, uh, agenda in, in for the economic and, uh, and external relations uh, um, ties. Mm. But let me tell you, there is this point and there is the other point also that um, the French presidents usually they have um, an agenda they have to follow extern and externally, uh, whether they have problems in the inside or not. Uh, from uh, Mitterrand till uh, Macron, um, usually Egypt uh, has a special place and a strategic place in their uh, calculations, especially mm -hmm. in this region. Um, so whether his, uh, um, it doesn't count on his own personality. Um, um, so, um, but concerning what's taking place in France, of course, he wants to deliver the message that he's traveling all over the world, that he's still recognized, that he's not isolated. Mm. As you can see, there is um, this, the movement towards France now. People are a little skeptic. They're not totally, uh, there is no much visits to, to the Elysee now. Mm. Uh, everyone is keen not to make any comments until things will be clear. No one is supporting France or against uh, mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. For example, I will give you a quick uh, example. What happened in Spain was Catalonia. Uh, when they called for the independence, all the European nations and even the United States uh, backed uh, Madrid uh, as the, the, against the, the independence movement in Catalonia. But when we had this problem interiorly in France, no one is taking sides. No yes. one is uh, criticizing Macron or, or criticizing even the yellow vests. Mm. So the timing is that he's in a current struggle to show that the Republic in on March, meaning he's going forward. Okay. And um, uh, Mr. Mohamed Adil, how do you read the timing of the visit since you are a researcher at uh, the Egyptian Center for Strategic Studies? I agree with Dr. Sheep's point of view for sure. Mm. And I can add to it that uh, Macron knows very well that Egypt is the golden gate for Africa, if we might say. Mm. Um, he knows very well if he wants to interfere in the Libyan issue or any certain issue in Africa. He have to come through Egypt. Mm. Um, uh, this uh, visit comes in a time where he faces um, internal um, crisis that uh, he's seeking someone to support him. OK, he came to Egypt um, seeking um, support from our nation towards mm. um, his uh, government, as well as he knows very well the importance of economic trade um, agreements uh, mm. um, to be done with Egypt Mm. which is his way to make more trade uh, agreements with Africa. Yes. Well, um, actually, the, the, the trip was full mm. of uh, activities. It started with uh, a visit to Abu Simbel, uh, to Aswan. Again, this is sending a very important message to the whole world when it comes to security in Egypt and um, when it comes to tourism in Egypt in mm. particular. Also, uh, as you mentioned, a number of agreements were signed, um, um, further boosting economic trade between Egypt and France. And also the summit talks that were held where the two presidents discussed uh, issues of mutual concern, of course, concerning the situation in Libya, Yemen, Syria, and the stances of their countries towards uh, uh, what's going on in such uh, countries. And in addition to this, of course, military cooperation and combating terrorism. So it was uh, a very uh, busy uh, agenda. Uh, what were the main highlights for you, Dr. Uh, Sharif, of the, of the visit? 
First of all, uh, let me just make a quick comment about the Abu Simbel visit. Mm. Um, this is not the first because we have seen the first lady, American first lady, Melania Trump, when she went to the pyramids. And it was a significant uh, uh, message to the whole world mm. that Egypt is taking, uh, uh, it's retaking again its, uh, its place among the, the, high, the, the hotspots for uh, the civilized uh, tourism. I mean, I mean yes. that uh, for civilization. We all know that the relations between France and Egypt about concerning the Egyptian civilization is always very, very uh, tight about this point. Mm. Uh, President uh, François Mitterrand used to go to Luxor and Aswan. He, he used to spend many weeks there. Um, talking about, uh, about the aspect of the strategic um, files in this region, um, um, Egypt has made uh, a huge uh, diplomatic effort since 2013 concerning the Libyan issue, for example, to recognize um, the, the Mar Mar field marshal Khalifa Haftar mm -hmm. as someone who should be dealt with as a representative of the Libyan people now. Um, I know from the inner circles there in France, this person was, uh, persona non grata, was someone who was not desired at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he is now mm -hmm. being met especially um, uh, with the president of France at the Elysee, this is a huge success for Egypt. Mm -hmm. We delivered the message and we said we have to help the organized Patriot Army of Libya. And we always said, and we still uh, um, tie to this point, that the embargo that was, the arms embargo that was imposed on uh, the Gaddafi regime now should be lifted so that Libya should, uh, could, could fight terrorism there. Mm. Um, the cooperation between Egypt and France on the Libyan uh, file is increasing now. And uh, we have seen the summit of Palermo. Uh, we have seen that the, the Italians also uh, were very, very interested uh, to work with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on this point especially because we gave all the alerts in since 2013 and now the Europeans know very well if they want to find a solution, in, especially in this file, they have to work with Egypt. They have uh, been failed and disappointed with uh, Turkey as a partner, with the, the blackmail that took place with the refugees card. Mm -hmm. We never ha done so. We, we had a clear message from the beginning. And President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said, we will fight terrorism. We will fight the illegal immigration. We will fight all the groups who are trying to destabilize Libya because not only it will, uh, it will threaten our western borders, Thank God we have uh, uh, a great uh, uh, armed forces working 24 hours a day uh, mm -hmm. on, on the borders there. But it will always uh, jeopardize the security of the northern part of the Mediterranean, meaning Europe. Mm -hmm. Now they have populist uh, governments in Italy. Now the movements even in France are talking about the immigration and the problem that it is taking place. So now they know they have to work with a partner, mm -hmm. and this partner is Egypt. The, the same thing um, concerning uh, the Syrian problem. Mm -hmm. Well, President Macron made a quick comment during the press conference saying that um, he doesn't recognize uh, the government in Damascus of Bashar al-Assad. Mm -hmm. We in Egypt, we are working on, on, on the same platform from the start of the, the, the conflict there till now that, first of all, the unity of the Syrian state should be guaranteed. We don't, we don't wish to see Idlib in the part of Turkey or any divisions in the, in the, in the state, in the geographical state of Syria. We mm -hmm. want to see it united and guaranteed. Concerning the, the political transition, it's up to the people of Syria. Mm -hmm. That's why we are open here in Egypt to the negotiations with all the opposition who never had arms, who never were finance, uh, financed by any other uh, terrorist, group. terrorist group or yes. any uh, countries financing terrorism. So we are open for the choices of this, the Syrian people. So uh, I think that the French will understand. The, we have seen the Americans, uh, they retreated their forces mm -hmm. from Syria. So they, mean they are making, uh, remaking their calculations. I hope that the European Union, especially France, 
will decide uh, in the similar way. So Egypt uh, has a moderate point of view in all these conf uh, conflicts, exactly also with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mm -hmm. We are asking that the, the boosting of the Palestinian Authority should took place, should take place, so they can negotiate with the Israelis on a final peace plan whenever they are prepared. So okay. our moderate stance is clear. Yes. But uh, Mr. Mohammed Hanel, do you think that uh, the visit is a follow-up uh, for President Abdel Fattah Sisi's latest visit to France, which was in October 2017, and perhaps the same issues were discussed during that uh, visit? Yes, it is, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Um, um, it can be shown in the number of agreements we have signed with the French uh, side. Um, most of the agreements were already um, negotiated through the first visit of the president of the Sisi to Paris. Um, and signed during that visit. Yes, mm. yes. Um, uh, I can, uh, um, uh, I remember that um, most of the agreement points were discussed before in the first visit mm -hmm. of the Egyptian president. Mm -hmm. um, and the signing had been done here in Egypt. Um, we are talking about uh, eight <laughs> strategic uh, agreements over um, economy, social uh, issues, uh, transportation, health, education, culture. Um, this gives, gives us an indicator how much French uh, is willing to um, cooperate with the Egyptian side and uh, give us an uh, uh, indicator on uh, the level of strategic uh, cooperation between yes. the two nations. Indeed. Well, we're actually going to, to uh, discuss further uh, the economic cooperation between Egypt and France uh, at a later point uh, of the program because uh, I believe that France is not only targeting the Egyptian market or the, the uh, 90 million Egyptians, but rather 500 million uh, people in Africa, considering Egypt is a gateway yeah. uh, to Africa. Um, let's move on to cultural ties between Egypt mm. and France, which date back to um, a long <laughs> time back in history. And um, 2019 uh, was announced as the year of culture between Egypt and France. Now, uh, how do you see the cultural exchange between uh, both countries, especially that um, President Sisi and his French counterpart uh, are to, com uh, uh, to commemorate on the 150th anniversary of the opening of the Suez Canal? How do you see that? First of all, uh, what's amazing about um, and special about uh, the cultural relations between France and Egypt is that uh, this relation was never um, threatened or um, destabilized uh, in, in any time in history, um, even during the, the Suez Canal uh, uh, problems mm. in 1956. Uh, there, there is. Uh, I live with the French people, they have this passion towards Egypt and towards the civilization of it's Egypt. Um, they, they learn the, it the in Louvre schools. The Louvre museum is full of Egyptian antiquities uh, uh, and it attracts course. visitors from around the world. Oh, uh, and, and the school, uh, the, the school <coughs> um, and, um, um, books there, they, they, yes. you know, the little kids there, they know the kings, the pharaohs, they yes. know... The dynasties. Of and course. The, yes, they, they, and, and even at home. When mm. you go to their homes, they have books about the pharaohs. Yes. It's just a passion. Mm. Uh, and one of their dreams uh, is to travel to Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, maybe uh, the security issues that took place lately mm. made them, um, well, to n not to make these kind of mm. trips. But all the young people, their, their, their love is to Egypt, is to their civilization. Mm -hmm. So it was never threatened. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there is uh, many things that shows that we have these ties, like the French University that was inaugurated here. Mm -hmm. We have also uh, a part of the Sorbonne University that is inaugurated here in, uh, since the 1994, I think. So uh, we have uh, all these ties. The French law has uh, his traces in our uh, yes. law, mm -hmm. and um, we have uh, actually the Egyptian law is based exactly. on the <laughs> French law. Exactly. So, so, so uh, except when it comes to Sharia, of course, uh, this is yeah. But well, other than that, it's it's all French. W what is amazing is that Napoleon Bonaparte, when he came to Egypt, he took some things from the Sharia and he applied it to some things for, yes. for the heritage, for example, yes. um, in some points, not all, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is this uh, huge exchange in all aspects. And at a certain time, and maybe in the, at the um, 
the first part of the 20th century, many Egyptians spoke dual languages, many people knew French. And from what I know, lots of the French uh, young people who wish to learn Arabic, they don't go to, the, to Morocco or Algeria. Mm. They, they have the close ties, colonial ties, of course, mm. but they prefer to, to come to Egypt. Mm. And they know that Egypt is different because Egypt is uh, the link between uh, Asia, Africa, and Europe. Uh, it has all the cultures and as uh, the, uh, the head of the civilization, if you, have, if you have the civilization as a body, this is the head, this is the start. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, canals, uh, the Suez Canal uh, and uh, Deliceps who, who worked on it, uh, this is uh, something that uh, uh, shows that Egypt used to work with the French for development, mm -hmm. as we had for, uh, for the metro stations also. Yes. Uh, we are working now with them in the social security um, um, project and also in the forming of the administrative uh, uh, young people in what's called the, the, uh, the administration, meaning the school that forms the people who would work as leaders afterwards. Yes. So we're copying this again. Mm -hmm. um, so all what is cultural is something very, very tight. It will never be affected uh, with, uh, with, rela with any political situation. Just regardless who is president, of regardless of what's going on in the whatever, these, these are these are well established relations. Whatever is said uh, by any uh, figure mm. or any president from mm. any side, but, uh, the, this relation is stable and will continue. And uh, remember that France uh, was the first country that worked with Egypt after the revolution of 2013. Yes. And uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi had uh, very uh, good relations with his counterpart François Hollande at that time. And he was one of the rare uh, Western presidents who came to inauguration of uh, the Suez Canal uh, because he was seeing that the French-Egyptian relations is uh, the cornerstone of the foreign relations of France in the Middle East. Okay. Well, actually, we need to move on to uh, the economic ties between Egypt and uh, France and discuss further the agreements that were signed between uh, both sides. Uh, but first, we're going to take a look at a report illustrating economic cooperation between Egypt and France, and we'll be right back. During French President Emmanuel Macron's visit to Egypt, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and the French leader witnessed the signing of a number of agreements between the two countries to develop education, health, transportation, foreign affairs, trade, culture and youth issues. The two presidents also took part in the Egyptian-French Joint Economic Forum held on Monday. The visit also marked the start of France-Egypt 2019, which was launched earlier this year by President Sisi and his French counterpart to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the opening of the Suez Canal. It's worth noting that Egypt and France have strengthened economic and military ties since President Sisi assumed office in 2014. Several memos of understandings were signed by Minister of Investment and International Cooperation, Sahar Nasser, and the Executive Director of the French Development Agency. The major MOUs signed or cover the strategic partnership between the two states on social and economic development from 2019 to 2023 based on Egypt's 2030 Sustainable Development Plan. Others involved facilitated credit agreement with a loan of $6 million to support the social security sector in Egypt and a facilitated credit agreement to support women-owned small and medium and micro enterprises with a loan of $50 million and a $1 million grant. The Egyptian and French sides also signed an agreement to finance the fourth phase of construction of the Cairo Heliopolis metro line with a loan of $336 million. Worth noting, President Macron left Egypt after signing some 30 deals worth nearly 1 billion euros. The agreements and memorandums of understanding between Paris and Cairo covers various sectors including transportation, health, education, energy and infrastructure. <laughs> 